UFC 134 recap video. I'm making a little change uh, with these recap videos, and I said I'm only now going to cover uh, selected bouts. Um, part of the problem, I think, was before that um, I based a lot of my things on the Sherdog play by play because uh, watching um, all of the bouts proves quite impossible if you live in, in, in England unless you want to do your recap video about 10 days later. Um, the uh, the free uh, um, bouts on the UFC page, Facebook page, often don't work and not all of us have the money uh, to be able to afford the package with it on ESPN or uh, the pay-per-view uh, by other means. So what I'm going to do now really is only talk about selected bouts, and these will be selected bouts which I have seen, um, and they will be ones that I have seen based on uh, what looks good <laughs> um, or random uh, from the play-by-play uh, -play write ups. Um, I will run through the, uh, the, the full results, but it, it, I won't really be speaking about it. So that's just to give you a sort of inkling of what's going on. If you had to call uh, UFC 134 anything, uh, from what I've read and seen, it would be Revenge of the Kickboxers, which makes a nice change, really, for some of us who have uh, been inundated by the wrestlers uh, of late. Um, having said that, the first bout was uh, both up and on the ground, and the crowds uh, in uh, Rio reacted to that a little bit. Um, the only real thing that I have to say uh, about the first match between uh, Yves Dubrowin and uh, Ian Loveland is um, to point out that uh, during the second round, Yves Dubrowin managed to throw a low kick. Um, so uh, I will be mentioning um, these things, particularly when Yves Dubrowin went on uh, to win and it was by split decision. Oh dear. So uh, if, if my idea of penalising uh, every um, low blow uh, with a deducted point uh, was in, uh, in fact enforced, that would be a draw uh, at best um, and a victory for Ian Loveland at worst. I just thought I'd point that out because it's in matches like that where it, it, it actually matters. Next bout was Eric Silva and Luis Ramos and I have to say this bout could have ended very differently had the fight gone on. Finished in the third, first round um, but I would say 80% of uh, what happened in the 30, first round was all Luis Ramos. He was uh, certainly showing the most aggression. He was also showing control. He kept backing up uh, uh, Eric Silva. Um, this fight I didn't know was happening, so I made no prediction on it for some reason. I don't know if it was a late addition uh, or if it just wasn't marked. I missed it out on the card, I don't know. Anyway, um, about, now how long was it into the bout? Uh, it doesn't say. Didn't feel very long. Maybe a minute and a half, something like that. Uh, Eric Silva, out of nowhere, got a uh, a punch, and I think it was just like a single strike, and it landed Luis Ramos on his ass. He wasn't knocked out at that point, I don't think. But then Eric Silva followed up, and he was certainly knocked out. It was possibly a flash knockout because he got up very quickly afterwards and I think he even protested but you could tell he was wobbly I think he nearly fell down again um, that was uh, uh, it was a brilliant showing from Eric Silva um, 
but I have to say, if the fight had gone on, uh, I don't know um, who might have won that one. It's almost a pity that it ended so quickly. Raphael Asunkeo and Johnny Eduardo. Um, it is a shame in the second round that uh, Asunkeo didn't manage to get the RNC. Um, he had been on uh, Eduardo's back several times um, and managed to pull him to the ground several times. And uh, when he started, when they would meet and uh, Asunke would sort of swing around uh, to his rear, so to speak. You could almost see uh, the uh, the horror on Eduardo's face, and he would sort of like go for the the uh, the side of the cage, and he he, w he would never make it. He would always end up down on the ground. At the end of the second round, that happened, and. Uh, Asunkeo looked close to winning. Um, he'd got uh, the RNC, flattened him out, hooks in, turned him over, and then he ran out of time. I don't know uh, if it was a case of um, Eduardo, Eduardo's defence being brilliant or not. I don't think so. I actually think it was more a case of Asunkeo simply ran out of time. Didn't matter because in the end he won uh, the bout and rightly so by unanimous decision. But um, it would have just been such a picture perfect ending. What I like about Asunkeo is the way he moves. Um, I, I just love it. Um, I can't decide if it's, you know, some of the these mixed martial arts artists, when you watch them, they move like um, animals, they move like large cats. Um, it's just the way they move. I can't really describe it. Continuing, uh, Rua managed to get his revenge on Forrest Griffin. And there have been a lot of people talking about the fact that Forrest Griffin uh, has said that he doesn't think he's improved very much um, and isn't really um, happy in what he does. Perhaps it shows or perhaps it was just talk. I don't know. Uh, but... Um, Again, uh, Mauricio uh, got a, uh, a punch to the side of the head um, and that was the end of uh, Forrest Griffin. I think it's debatable as to uh, whether he knew what he was doing um, because the writer here says that he was shooting uh, in desperation after he had got caught with that um, punch. I thought he was just a little bit out of it and didn't quite know where he was. So I could be wrong there. Uh, but there we are. And then Hammerfists, uh, after he was down, finished that off. With regards to the Spencer Fisher and Tiago Tavares match, I uh, would have given um, Tiago Tavares the first round, but I was listening to the um, the commentators, and I was thinking, I'm not sure I actually agree um, with what they were saying. Uh, you know, they were saying that um, Spencer Fisher was just being shut down, wasn't being, you know, uh, um, uh, able to get anywhere on the feet or on the ground. On the ground, no, definitely not. But on the feet, you know, to begin with, for the first half of the first round, I thought that Spencer Fisher was doing fine and possibly winning it on the feet until it went to the ground. Um, but anyway, the second round I can already hear in the back of my mind people um, complaining about the stoppage. I have to say I think it was a perfectly fair stoppage. Happened to be uh, Mark Goddard who was... Re uh, who was um, uh, the referee of that um, and if you look back in my videos you'll see he's one of the people that I know uh, from Cage Gladiators and have in fact interviewed myself so um, I, I think that his stoppage was perfectly okay um, I don't think I think people need to remember that you don't need to be actually knocked out um, for the uh, stoppage to occur if you can't defend yourself um, it, it can still be a TKO stoppage. You don't need to be knocked out. Spencer Fisher wasn't knocked out. I, I don't think he was even flash knocked out. Um, but he obviously wasn't defending himself. And he was given at least two warnings that I heard 
uh, from Mark Goddard, um, you know, to defend yourself or else. And he wasn't. So um, I think that's that's perfectly uh, perfectly acceptable. But I can, in the back of my mind, hear people complaining about that. I never thought the day would come uh, when I would give my Man of the Card award to Dan Miller. <laughs> um, people who have followed me will know that I'm quite a critic of him, um, basically because he's lost so many in a row, uh, and I don't understand why the organisation are choosing to keep him on, whereas with others, with some others, um, I, I can find a reason even if I don't agree with it. Do you know, he lost this uh, this match again, but I would, <laughs> I would actually advocate for the UFC to, to keep him on. Um, he is quite exciting. Uh, he does have good heart, and he does have good defence, um, and he needs defence uh, against somebody like uh, Rusamar Palares. Bless him. Um, he was uh, a Brazilian uh, taking part in Brazil, and... There were a few bits in the first round that, that made me laugh. Uh, the second and third rounds, not quite so interesting, but the first round was good. Um, Russell Marpalares would, would stand there and uh, he would do what's known as sort of bobbing and weaving. But unlike some of the other fighters that I've seen who actually move their whole shoulders, Rusamar Palarez just moves his head a little bit like that. Now, when I am trying to get my canary called Jojo back into his cage and I'm going up to him with a net, he will sit on the, uh, the top of my, um, uh, my, my door cover and he will faint um, going left and then go right and his little head goes like this whilst he's trying to sort of make me think he's going one way and he goes another I, it just flashed through my mind when I was watching him and a lot of the times he'd be uh, uh, quite still doing that and then suddenly he'd jump into some amazing uh, submission and, and Dan Miller was able to sort of overcome that what he wasn't able to overcome was the uh, kick that landed him on his arse and then um, Tiar uh, sorry, not Tiar I was going to say Tiago Tavares then, no. Uh, Rosamar Palarez then um, uh, sort of did a few um, uh, shots to uh, Dan Miller whilst he was on the ground. And then he just suddenly stops. The referee, um, who's Herb Dean, was absolutely nowhere near them, okay. And he just stops. And he runs around the ring with his arms in the air, thinking that he's won. He jumps up onto the side of the cage to appease the crowd. And Derp Dean's going, um, I haven't stopped the fight. You're still supposed to be fighting. And uh, Dan Miller, who was not knocked out, um, or there might have been had Rosamar uh, Palarez continued to do that, uh, sort of got, got up and is waiting to, to continue to fight. And they then continue to fight for a whole three rounds before uh, Rosamar Palarez wins by decision. Um, but I do just think that uh, I'm going to give my Man of the Card award to, uh, to Dan Miller um, for that. <laughs>